There's a lot to be thankful for in the capital city, but if it had to be narrowed down to just what thing, what would it be? It's a tough question. You give it some thought and I'll share my answer next on City Limits. As we're counting our blessings this year at Thanksgiving, I thought it would be a good idea to stop by the Peer Area Referral Service, otherwise known as PARS, and our local food pantry to talk to Laura White. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you for uh, coming down here. You bet. This is great. In the middle of all these boxes and cans of food, this is exciting. Uh, you're the Executive Director for Peer Area Referral Services. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, so one thing that I want to know is, you know, you uh, must have a passion for this kind of thing and for the work that happens at PARS. Uh, tell us about that and why you are in this business. Well, um, I had the opportunity um, two years ago. It's actually been two years. And um, I think um, PARS is such a unique um, business. Uh, we're not run on governmental um, funding. Um, everything that we get comes through the community. Um, we do get United Way funds, mm -hmm. um, which we wouldn't be able to survive without our United Way funds. But the most um, of our contributions do come from the community. And for me, that is just something that is just awesome that I get to witness um, every single day, is the generosity of the communities in which we live in. Um, I do have a compassion and a, a passion for um, helping people. Um, children are probably one of my um, deepest um, uh, passions to uh, look for. Yep. Um, I, I just think that if um, through education um, and through your heart, we can serve and, and make people's lives better. All right, so Peer Area Referral Services does more than food pantries. So food pantry is a subset of that organization. Exactly. Um, we have three main things that we do, and, and it is the um, food, uh, food pantry. We run the backpack program, and then we also run like emergency services. And, and most of what Peer Area Referral does is emergency services. Um, we can help people with um, utility bills. Um, we can help them if they're being evicted from their home. If they can't afford medication, they can come to us. Um, if they need um, gas money or if you're a stranded um, person here, we can help with emergency services for lodging, for gas, for um, food, mm -hmm. um, and we cover all that. We also um, have started a basic budgeting class because like I said, education um, can help you learn how to get out of what you're in. Um, so we, we really strive to educate, to help people help themselves is, is kind of what our motto is. And so that's what we go for. Um, most people think PARS is just the food pantry, mm -hmm. but we do several other things. We run the, um, we have a legal aid program. Um, and exciting news for that, starting um, next Monday in, um, we will have a, an attorney from Dakota Plains that comes into our office so anybody who income qualifies can come and get free legal help um, through that attorney and she'll be here once a week and that's a new program that we're starting. Um, we also do senior box um, program which is a commodity program for seniors and we deliver them. Um, you, they can also get them from the peer um, senior center and also from the Fort Pierce Senior Center. But we're the ones um, for Pierre and we have approximately 78 of those boxes that we distribute monthly. Um, and there's just so many other little programs mm -hmm. that come through PARS. And I don't know that the community until we're actually in doing what we're doing that month or you know during that period of time that they realize that we are more than just the food pantry. All right, so uh, just to talk about that a little bit more, where does somebody go to find out information about all the different things that PARS does? Um, we do have a website, um, which is at um, www.peerareareferral.org. Okay. And on that, it shows you volunteer opportunities it shows you what kind of help we can um, do what um, is coming up um, in the future and, it, and it's pretty easy to navigate Good. Um, we are located in the um, phone book um, you can reach us at 224-8731 um, or you can come to our offices um, unfortunately our, our um, pantry and our offices are in different locations yeah. um, at some point in time that would be our master plan is to have everything in one location but um, our offices are located at 2520 East Franklin which is just right off the truck bypass 
All right. And you'll see our sign right there on the doors. Great. So. Okay. So you're an organization that is very meaningful to this community. It helps a lot of people. But right now we're in the location of the food pantry. Right. So tell us, where are we? We are um, at the Boys and Girls Club is where we're located and um, we really do love our new location here. Mm -hmm. um, it's roomy, it's bright. Um, when we have lots of clients, um, we feel a little bit clustered, but um, we can serve anywhere from um, 20 people here down to two. Um, and we just never know how many people are coming in a, in a day. Um, in the past, before I started, it was that it was probably 10 to 20 people per week. And we can see 10 to 20 people per day now. And so the need after the flood, um, and I think it was the, um, the need was shown, it showed where we were, and I think that's where our numbers have increased. Now, a lot of businesses in town, you know, they've kind of faltered down and they've gone down and gotten back to normal, but this is our normal now, um, wow. serving more people. Mm -hmm. And we are unique that way, too, because our need hasn't changed or gone back down. It, it seems to gone up, but I think it's because of recognition and knowing mm -hmm. where they can go for help. All right, that's interesting because we had a major recession prior to the flood, and then we had the flood. You're saying that the increase in levels that we're seeing now has been up since the flood. Right, yep, our numbers have um, probably doubled and they haven't gone wow. back down. So. All right, yep. so how have you adjusted to that new normal? Well. Um, this new normal is my normal since right. I started, mm -hmm. so um, for the old executive director, I, I don't know how she did it, yeah. um, but um, our normal is is um, the community. Um, we have a great participation. Um, when, when there is a need, we have um, the Boy Scouts who come and do food drives. We do the Feinstein Challenge where we get matched. A, a millionaire from Rhode Island challenges us to raise as much food and money as we possibly can in the months of March and April. And then we can, um, he'll match for every pound of food and every dollar, we get that dollar and then he'll match a percentage of that. So that's a big um, food drive. And then we also have the postal food drive. And then okay. through the graciousness of the community, little kids, middle school, the high school, just everybody around, especially during the holiday seasons, just do food drives. And so, okay, so let's, on that note, uh, recently you ran out of soup. Yes. For the first time in decades. Right, 40 years. Um, from what I talked to the volunteers, and we, um, we probably have over 3,500 volunteers throughout the year. And I went to several of them, not all of them, but the ones who have been around forever and ever. And it is the first time in history that they can remember that we ran out of soup. Um, the middle schoolers stepped up and they did a food drive for um, one week and they raised over 695 pounds of um, soup. And so it's just little things like that when you think, oh my gosh, I don't know what we're going to do somebody in the community pulls through. That's right, so once again, it's a community effort to keep this place going. Right, and um, I know that um, Feeding South Dakota is, is on the list also, and they had a very interesting um, concept that, that they taught me when I started, and it's you know money versus food, and I think um, if you buy one box of Cheerios and you donate that to the food pantry, we can feed one family one box of Cheerios, but if you donate the money that you purchase those Cheerios for, we can buy eight boxes of Cheerios through Feeding South Dakota. So the partnership with that has helped us immensely also, okay. um, having Feeding South Dakota here in town with us because right. we have that opportunity to get the foods at such a lower cost right. and we can almost quadruple what we can purchase for the amount of one. Great, so. great. Okay, so you've already mentioned the fact that we're going into the holiday season. Right. And first of all, in November we have Thanksgiving and then we have Christmas. So that has got to be a time that you need to ramp up for and take advantage of. Uh, people need help during the holidays. They do, and you know, um, when you're sitting and you're eating your meal and you're always thinking about other people, and I, I know I do, but, um, the one really cool thing that PARS does is the holiday meals. And I just, um, being a part of the holiday meals is what makes our job, I think, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, it is a time where it affects nobody but the person giving the meal um, and the family that's receiving the meal. Um, there is no pressure. You know, you don't have to buy, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to, um, you don't even have to think about anything, but you can make somebody's holiday more special. And that's what's so great about the holiday meals. 
Um, when we distribute them, I'll never forget the first year that I helped and we went and delivered one and um, there were some kids that ran to the door and they said, oh my gosh, what is that? And it was a turkey and they had never seen a turkey oh, before wow. or they had just never seen that much food. And yeah. so I, it was just awesome to be able to be a part of that. And I think um, the holiday meals have kind of um, set themselves um, as a go-to for the, for the, um, for our communities in mm -hmm. Stanley and Hughes. Um, we have just never had a problem. Um, last year, we even increased it even more. We um, did the 350 meals for Thanksgiving. We did 350 meals at Christmas. And then with Bank West and um, also Fisher Rounds, they did a big drive too. We were able to feed an additional um, gift box meals. And we served 1,250 people in the holiday season. Oh my goodness. And it was just incredible to be able to do that. So um, if, if anybody's interested yeah. in, in the holiday meals, they can um, reach us at our office. Um, applications are online. Um, on our website, you can get there. Um, if you'd like to donate, you can either um, just send a check. They just need to be made out to Peer Area Referral Service. And um, they're $38 again this year. Dakota and Mart. And that serves $38 serves is a meal for four? Six. Six. Yep, it meal serves six. six people. Okay. And there's probably about, I want to say, 15 to 20 items mm -hmm. that we do. And it's a 10 to 12 pound turkey at Christmas time or at Thanksgiving time and then a 10 to 12 pound ham okay. at Christmas time. Um, Dakota Mart, they're just a wonderful um, group to work with at that time and they give us a, a great deal so we can keep the cost at $38. And mm -hmm. um, it's just, um, I don't know, it just is a magical time of the season for That's PARS. Right. And, and we go through so much and we see so much um, need mm -hmm. every day. And I, um, the, everybody is in crisis who comes to PARS. And it is just nice to see at that time of the holiday meals, communities coming together and, and taking people out of crisis. So of everything that you have going on here at PARS, what about it, what about the things that you do are you most grateful for? I am just most grateful for the community because honestly, I don't believe that PARS would exist without the community um, and the backing that we get. The partnerships that we have um, with the city, with the county, with everybody um, in the businesses in town. Um, it truly is a community project of, of PARS. And without the community and without their help um, the volunteers uh, where else will you use that many volunteers in a year and people are just willing to come and help um, without that we have a very small staff we only have two full-time people and one part-time person at this time and we do it all and so without our volunteers I just don't know where we would be or what we could do and last year in 2013 just for numbers yeah. um, we served over 9,600 people and I, I don't know what the the were the um, um, the number was, but um, I know that it was nine thousand six hundred and some odd people are who mm -hmm. came through our door. Wow. Actually, came through our Those door. Those are individual people. Yeah, the families and yeah. um, for children and yeah. for um, adults put together nine thousand six hundred and some a lot odd of people. people. Yep, and so in our phone calls, um, you know, we are basically a referral service, and mm -hmm. um, everybody in town first thing they say, "Have you been to Pars?" Yes. And so. PARS is just the central location. We um, work very closely with Avera in case of emergencies or you know disasters that happen that happen with there. We work with Avera. All the churches in town, um, we have a very good relationship with the churches and, and we couldn't do it without their support either. So, And um, I know the city of Pier, we have a roundup program so that if people want to round up their utility bills to the next dollar, right. the money comes to you. Exactly. And, and that is just an awesome program. Um, it has helped us. Um, 2013 is when we started it. Um, and I believe it was the middle of 2013. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to service um, hundreds of, of clients. Um, with that and just a statistic for our emergency people fund um, projects we've helped over 256 families and if you times that times four it's um, almost a thousand people just this year from January to September and we've spent over twenty three thousand two hundred dollars just in paying utility bills and rent and medication and transportation costs very good um, for the food pantry um, we've written one thousand four hundred and eighty six vouchers so those are just individual people that have come through just for the food pantry and um, that 
that comes out to 4,300 people, including the adults and children that we've served and that we've fed mm -hmm. um, through the food pantry. All right. Our backpack program so far, yeah. just from August till today, um, we've served 2,563 kids. Wow. And so, I mean, it is huge. Yeah, that um, is. <laughs> And when you think of it and you break it down to those terms, we truly are serving a lot of people in our community. Yeah. Well, you know there is a need, and I think a lot of people are surprised to hear that there's that level of a need, but we know that there is. Right. And that this is a way that people can make a difference. Right. And, and we just, like I said before, we just couldn't do it without the support mm -hmm. of the city and without um, the support of our communities because right. they are what makes it work. Right. Well, thank you, Laura, so much for everything you do here at the Food Pantry and at PARS to help the people in need in our community. Thank you. It's very, we, we could be grateful for you. Well, thanks. And what you do. <laughs> thanks so much. Thank you. We just left the Pier Fort Pier Food Pantry and we made our way to a new location and a new guest. So what we're doing now, we're standing in Feeding South Dakota in the building that's in the Pier area and we have uh, the manager here, Russ Hofeld. So welcome Russ. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. Now I just said manager, but what is your actual title? Uh, Central Operations Manager. All right. And so Feeding South Dakota, this is the Pier location, but it really is part of a, a larger organization that's across South Dakota. It is, it is. Feeding South Dakota is our state's uh, largest hunger relief uh, organization, charitable organization. And we have our warehouse here in Pier and also one in uh, Sioux Falls and one in Rapid City. Now I know that when we established this location a couple of years ago, I was involved in that project. And so this is near and dear to my heart, the fact that we've gotten operations here that has been very successful. And I know at the time when they were looking at this location, it really fit a need we had in Pier, and it also fit a need that, that um, Feeding South Dakota was experiencing. They had a gap in Central South Dakota. Absolutely, yeah. So out of Pier, we actually cover 24 counties in, uh, in the central third of the state. And uh, yeah, prior to Feeding South Dakota uh, being established here in Pier, there was quite a gap in service. Um, out of Pier, we actually um, support uh, just over 80 different hunger relief programs in the central part of the state. And so, um, you know, the work that, that yourself and a lot of others did early on has uh, gone to, to help all of those programs out. That's right. All right. Now, we were a few minutes ago talking to the food pantry. This is a food bank. And I know people get those two different terms mixed up. Can you just explain what the difference is? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So the difference between a, a food bank and a food pantry is quite simply this. A food bank, uh, if you think think of it in terms of the for-profit world would be the wholesale distributor and the food pantry would be the retailer. So the food pantries are, are dealing directly with clients, individuals and families in need um, and the food pantries and, and other programs like that get a lot of their food from food banks. Now I know that when we were talking to Laura White she talked about the fact that when they get donations of dollars if they come up here uh, they can get food that uh, they can use that dollar to buy a lot more food here than they can anywhere else. So it just kind of talk about that, how this is a way for them to extend the dollar. Absolutely, yeah. And, and here at Feeding South Dakota, that's really uh, uh, what we're best at is leveraging dollars, yes. our donors' dollars. And, and so, um, and, and if I could for just a second, uh, it might help to explain how food banking works. And, and, and Feeding America is a national organization, and uh, they have about 200 food banks nationwide that are, are, are member food banks of Feeding America and so they're working with uh, large um, food manufacturers and, and, and large donors to acquire donated food and then they make that available to their member food banks mm -hmm. and so we get a lot of our food from that that network that we have with Feeding America and we're able to pass it on to those organizations just like the PARS food pantry and yeah so um, we are able to leverage dollars um, uh, you know, so if, if PARS, if, if somebody donates funds to PARS, PARS, instead of going out and, and buying that food 
at uh, retail cost or something like that, they can come up here and get that food for um, uh, as little as 18 cents a pound, in some cases even, even lower cost than that. And even when you talk about food drives and, and those types of things, they have their place. But if you think about that, if those donors donating the food to the pantries actually donated dollars rather than going out and buying those items, uh, their dollars would go a lot further. That's right, okay. So we're standing in front of uh, one of your vehicles. And so as we've been talking about, you serve a large geographic area here in the middle of the state. And this truck is part of a system to make that happen. Absolutely, so this is our, our mobile food pantry truck and, and this has been a, a great tool for us. Um, we, we were able to implement this mobile food pantry program and uh, procure this truck through a grant here a couple of years ago um, through the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that's done is it's really allowed us to um, fill a, a high need in very rural, um, low access areas of central South Dakota. And so we take this truck uh, filled with food to um, rural areas high need uh, you know the population in, in these areas are, are a, a high need and, and they have a high what we call food insecurity rate and um, we do one day distributions and so um, we've got folks within the community that have volunteered their time and their resources to help us out as far as unloading the truck and getting set up and, and having a venue indoors to set things up in, in the winter and, and, and um, in inclement weather and, uh, and we invite folks in the community that are in need to come and, and um, uh, get uh, you know, a, a week or two supply of, of groceries. It's not going to meet 100% of their needs, but it's gonna help to supplement mm -hmm. some of those other things that might be going on as well. Yep, all right, and so uh, talk a little bit about the building that we're in right now uh, and what day-to-day -day life is like here in this facility. Okay, well the, the building that we're in right now, a lot of people probably know that uh, it was um, uh, the, the old Pepsi building. Um, yeah. Pepsi used to be in this building. It's just under 9,000 square feet. And um, you know, I guess as far as kind of the, the um, daily schedule of things and, and the flow here at Feeding South Dakota, um, you know, we, we have trucks coming in um, each week and, and sometimes multiple times each week. And uh, obviously our, our goal is not to bring food in and store it. We want that food going out okay. because we know that, that there's a need out there. And so we've got trucks on the road multiple days uh, throughout the week. This mobile food pantry, we operate that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. Um, I've got a truck on the road today um, doing deliveries. As I mentioned before, we have about 80 different partner agencies throughout the state and we do deliver to each one of them um, on a monthly basis. Uh, they're able to uh, actually go on our website and through an agency, what we call our agency portal, they can see a snapshot at any given time of what we have available mm -hmm. and then order that for their, their hunger program, whether it be a, a soup kitchen, food pantry, backpack program, senior nutrition program, uh, any of those types of programs. So. Um, Lots of activity. Uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of it, yep. All right, so let's talk about some of the partnerships that you have. I know that you've got different organizations that do donations in different kinds of ways. Talk about some of the key projects that you have going on that really is a partnership with another organization, such as the Cattlemen's Association. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we had uh, uh, the Cattlemen's uh, Foundation did a, a, a very nice fundraiser for us this summer and uh, uh, raised a, a substantial amount of money for us to, to go ahead and, and procure beef protein, which is a very important part of, of uh, you know, um, individuals' uh, diets. And, and, and it's also a high cost, so it's, it's mm -hmm. re really important that we're able to help out with, with those types of things. Some of the other partnerships that uh, have been just great for us, uh, one I would point out would be the, the partnership that we have with, with CHS and, and Midwest Cooperative here in Pierre, yes. and then uh, Northern Plains Cooperative up in Gettysburg. Okay. Um, each year in March, they do a two-week um, two week long fundraising event for us called Harvest for Hunger. And uh, what they do is, is they get out and they ask their members and employees to donate to those in need. And, and not just dollars, but farmers can actually donate grain. That's right. And then yes. they turn that into dollars. And, and it's really been an amazing event each year. And so we're, we're grateful for, for that partnership and all those partnerships that we have. All right, so if somebody is interested in uh, donating a commodity or getting involved in another way uh, with donations, what would they do if they wanted to know? 
Yeah, that's a very good question. So right now, uh, something that we're working on is, uh, I, I mentioned that we have uh, some, some monies that were raised this summer through the Cattlemen's Foundation to procure beef. And so one thing that uh, uh, we're kind of testing the waters with right now is um, I, I've been working with uh, a number of uh, processors and uh, it's, it's been found that, that I could get the beef processed into hamburger at about 80 cents a pound. So when we talk about stretching those dollars, again, mm -hmm. that's really what we try and do here at Feeding right. South Dakota. and. Um, being good stewards of the, the, the monies that are given to us. And so um, I, I would just take this opportunity to invite uh, any cattle producers, cattle ranchers, uh, if they're so inclined to donate a beef to Feeding South Dakota, and uh, we could go ahead and, and get that processed into, um, into ground burger and, and, and put it to good use and, and distribute it to those in need. All right, so the challenge is on. If you're out there and you have uh, inclination to donate in that way, uh, we'd like to hear from you. And where would they get a hold of you? Uh, they could contact myself. Uh, phone number is 494-3663 or email russ at feedingsouthdakota.org. Okay, so the holidays are coming up. Do you have anything going on that's specific to holidays? Yeah, we sure do. Uh, each year, for the last few years anyhow, we've done a, a, a holiday turkey drive, obviously, um, you know, for the Thanksgiving and also the Christmas holiday. And so we've got our turkey drive uh, coming up, I believe, um, November, I've got the dates written down here, um, November 10th through the 21st, obviously. Okay. Folks could uh, bring a turkey up anytime they want and, and we'll get it distributed for them uh, to somebody that, that isn't as fortunate, but, but the actual um, uh, turkey drive itself is going to run the 10th through the 21st of November. All right, so as the manager of this operation and you look at all the things and how you interact with a lot of different people and everything, what are you the most grateful for? Um, obviously, I would have to say, you know, all of the support that we've we've had uh, since we've been established here in, in 2010, um, you know, the community here in Pier and Fort Pier, um, you know, those, again, like yourself, uh, that, that really got things uh, up and going and established here, and then uh, those that just continue to support us. And, and we are very blessed um, by all of that support and uh, just ask that um, uh, those that, that are as blessed as we are, um, think about, uh, you know, um, helping us uh, bless others that aren't as fortunate. You know, there's a lot of, of, of children, seniors, families out there that, that aren't as, as fortunate. So. All right. Well, we want to thank you for everything that you have going on here. You have a great operation going. Everything's neat and clean, and you've got <laughs> a lot of activity and a lot to organize. So thank you so much for yes. everything you do for the peer community as you're helping to feed South Dakota. Thank you. Thank you.